Hello everybody, um, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melanie and you can find me on here, I guess, and on Ravelry and on Instagram as Braden Tinker. Um, I haven't posted a video in like, feels like a hundred years. So I'm kind of, I've unlearned all of this. I don't know any of the knitting lingo anymore. I don't know what I'm doing and it's all weird. So just bear with me and we'll, um, we'll get through it, I hope, together. Um, I haven't recorded a video in a long time. A lot of things happened uh, last year um, in my personal life that I don't really feel the need to discuss here, um, especially in the second half of last year. Uh, most of it wasn't Corona related, um, so that just sort of added on top of that. Uh, anyway, recently I've been, because I also wasn't knitting as much as I used to, so I really didn't have much to show anyway. Uh, so I was fine with not recording videos. Um, and then recently I've been watching more, uh, yeah, knitting videos on YouTube and I've been more active on my knitting Instagram account. And I just thought, oh, I'm kind of getting back into it. Maybe it'll be fun to record a video. And, uh, so I posted uh, something on my Instagram stories yesterday uh, and asking for questions from people that they would like to have answered. And most of you just really wanted to see what I've been working on and you know, what are my whips and stuff like that. And we're just excited to see a new video. So I was really excited to start something. And I had this like crazy idea that I've had for like a couple of weeks because a lot of the time, the only time that I have to record is on Monday evenings and it was Monday last night and I had this idea of, I don't have much to do on a Monday evening. My kid is with his dad. Um, I don't have like social obligations or anything. So I really like to have pizza on Monday as a sort of like to literally do nothing. I don't cook either. So I thought, oh, I'll do like this pizza and knitting type combination video um and so i went for to get like a pizza in town yesterday and i recorded some things and i came back and and then i just realized it's actually really weird because when you're eating pizza your fingers get really dirty so you don't want to touch your knitting and um you're eating so you can't really talk so i i i just Okay, obviously that idea was not great. <laughs> Maybe I'll add some of the footage at the end of this video. Um, after I recorded the pizza stuff, I, uh, I did something to my camera and the sound was completely off. It sounded as if I was um, underwater and there was like this really weird tinny sound and quite quickly the sound and the recording of the video were not synchronous anymore so I, I, I thought it was because I'd hooked up my microphone after that and then I removed the microphone and tried a whole recording a whole new video again and that still had the same sound so I think what happens is when I hook up the microphone to my phone it just does something to the settings and it just kind of remembers those settings I had to do a hard reset of my phone to sort of get rid of that stuff I really hope this works properly now um, but we'll see how how it goes um, this is my it's Tuesday now it's no longer Monday this is my lunch break usually um, I work from home most of the time. I don't really have time to do this now, but I'm just making some time because I put all of that effort into it last night and I really wanted to record a video and then it didn't happen. And I was a little bit frustrated with myself and a little bit disappointed. So I'm just doing it now. Um, yeah, so it's not knitting a pizza anymore as per my original idea. 
I'm serving uh, no lunch. I'm serving some tea. There's no food. I still kind of like the idea of having like a food related knitting video thing going on. Um, I think I think the problem is is that I don't I really would like to sort of step away from the traditional knitting video knitting podcast where I'm just sitting talking to a camera holding up my knits and nothing really exciting happens. I would like to add you know more editing and that kind of stuff. But I think the subject of knitting just doesn't lend itself very much to anything exciting. <laughs> I mean, you are in a, you know, in essence, just sitting there. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like there is something more exciting I could be doing. It's not pizza. I discovered that last night, but. <laughs> I, at some point I will crack this and these videos will be as visually interesting as I would like to have them be. Um, but yeah, so until that time, it's just, it's just me and my knitting. Um, so what have I been knitting on? Well, the thing that's been getting most attention uh, from me now is my ranunculus and everybody's knitting a ranunculus at the moment i feel oh i was gonna look up how many projects there are on youtube or on ravelry and then i forgot i'm just gonna look that up as of today there are which is i don't know what day is it today it's the end of Ju june it's the end of june tuesday last week of june um there are eight thousand. 744 projects on Ravelry for the ranunculus, which is a lot. Um, I was very, very inspired by Kat from the Heather and Hops podcast, who has knit one, a bunch of ranunculus sweaters and two, a bunch of single strand mohair tops um and they just looked so beautiful and floaty and very delicate and pretty and i just was inspired to cast one on um so i went to a local yarn shop here in uh, the town where i live in harlem in the netherlands we had a bunch but one of them is actually closed which is a bit of a shame because the one that closed had all the Rowan stuff, so they're gone. Um, but this one is still open, luckily, and she had um, this, I don't know if you can see that, Rico Essentials Super Kid Mohair stuff. And the color that I'm using is whoop, color number 35. And it's kind of like a purple pastel. It, it's really hard to photograph. It's almost sort of like a neon lilac, I would say, in real life. Um, very like a light and bright thing. Anyway, this is where I am. Um, it's very, very see-through and floaty and pretty. And I made a bunch of mistakes on the yoke, but I made them consistently. So I'm not at all bothered and I'm not at all tempted to rip back and redo them. Um, I think I'm almost done with the body actually. Uh, sorry. Um, I might make it a little bit longer. I have quite a long torso, so things that are like cropped sweaters, I always have to add length anyway. Um, so I have to like do some manual fidgeting of patterns when I make them because they are usually too short for me. Um, yeah, I don't want to put in a whole bunch of ribbing. Uh, I, there's like some twisted rib at the top and I thought it wouldn't be 
very visible in the mohair, but I do actually quite like how it ended up. So very, very happy with it. It's a really fun project. And um, I know there is another podcaster who's doing a, I think it's a knit along. Um, I have like one of my latest uh, Instagram posts is for this sweater, the ranunculus, and it has the hashtag www.ranunculuscal. And I think that's how you enter into that, um, into that knit along. Uh, I'm not really, uh, in, I wasn't really interested in winning anything for that. I'm just, <laughs> just kind of like, I, I just like boosting the hashtag and um, yeah, it's just nice to join in something. Um, yeah, super happy with this. And as soon as I'm done with this one, I want to like cast on another ranunculus. And I think that's the problem with this pattern. It's a little bit addictive. I mean, it's also, you're knitting on six millimeter needles. Um, what is that in US? So it's 10, size 10 US needles, which is massive. And so it goes quite quickly. Um, so I think that's why people kind of keep knitting on this. It's quite, the pattern is well written. It's quite nice. It's, there's no faffing about with like sizes and things like that. You just kind of do your own thing. I think really you just pick your yarn and go. And then if you find that it's too small, you can just get bigger needles. If you think it's too, I don't know what, too thin, you can use a thicker yarn. It's very sort of like plug and play and do as you want really. Um, but I have some um, dark green silk yarn from Knitting for Olive. And uh, I don't know where that's from. I think it's a Scandinavian country. It might be Danish. I could be very wrong on that. Sorry if I am. Uh, but I have some of that in my stash. I have a giant stash. Um, so I want to knit another one of these out of that and see how it measures up and like what it like looks like in different yarns and um yeah very i think that's very interesting and fun so the the mohair one is really if you hate yourself a little bit i definitely recommend knitting with a single strand of mohair uh, especially in the beginning when you're doing a cast on it's the mohair is flying everywhere except for where you want it to go um, and then for the longest time, I felt like I was wrestling with the spider's web. But uh, yeah, it, I'm getting there. And, and I've gone, gone through the yoke. There's just a lot of uh, guard, not guard stitch, uh, stockinette to work through now. But because it's so like mohairy, floaty, like cotton candy, you can just shove it in a tiny, tiny bag. This is a bag um, from Bertie and Puppet that I have. Uh, oh, can you see the Hugo? I use this for socks usually. Um, I don't knit a lot of socks at the moment, but when I do, this is one of those bags that I use it for and it just fits in here. This is like a sweater in a sock bag. So it's a good project to have, I think, if you're doing like a single strand of mohair sweater, it's great to put in a small, if you like, if you're, maybe if you're traveling, you're kind of constricted on size of your projects and stuff like that, do one of these, cause it's, it's compact or it's compactable, I guess. It allows itself to be reduced into size. Um, next project is, some tea. Next project is uh, the Friday tea from Petite Knit and whoop, it's a little bit of a mess. It's because I was pulling stuff in and out of bags last night when I was recording this the first two times. Uh, <laughs> but it's this, it's a tea. Uh, so the sleeves are going to be 
about up to here I would say and um, it does look very very small it does fit me I need to make it longer because of my ridiculously long torso um, but yeah other than that I think it looks really nice I think the pattern the pattern says to use fingering weight but um, It also, there is like a yarn suggestion, which is a yarn that is a collaboration between the, the pattern designer and a yarn, com yarn company from uh, Norway. And that yarn, I think it's called like Friday something. No, it's Sunday, Sunday yarn, which is Sunderskarn and Petite Knit collaboration yarn. And I feel like it's a lot um thicker than a regular fingering weight to me it seems like a good sport weight so i think that's why my the length of my sweater is so not lengthy it's because my yarn is much thinner that i'm using uh my contrasting color is also from uh Knitting for Olive, and it is the copper, copper, copper color. It's very nice yarn, very soft, very lovely. Um, but yeah, Ooh. there we go. It's a bit awkward. Um, I do really like the pattern. There is a broken rib stitch all throughout the pattern, which actually gives it quite a bit of interest. Um, and then there's, of course, there is the uh, changing of the color for the stripes, which also gives it interest. So it's not boring sweater. It's just that because mine, I'm just using such a thin yarn and I probably should have used a larger size needle. Um, I'm using three millimeters for this. Um, it's just taking a long time and I just ran out of steam a bit on this one and um, that's when I cast on for the ranunculus. I do really like the neckline it's a double um, yeah it's like folded so you make a long neckline and in the middle there's like a row of pearl stitches so you can fold it over nicely it just looks very clean and professional I find so I think I'll be very happy when this is finished. Um, it's a lot of work, but it'll look nice. It might be a bit warm for actually wearing in summer. Here in the Netherlands, it gets extremely humid in summer, which is weird, but it's, I guess, because we're next to the ocean or something. Um, but so it might be more of like an, a September thing to wear um, but I'm looking forward to be able to wear this and I think it'll be very nice and yeah happy with this so far I just need to finish it some other stuff that I've been working on are these market bags um, made out of a cotton yarn uh, this is the first one I did and I knit it out of Schepius Kalista, and I think this is their coral colorway. Um, there are a million colors in that yarn. The pattern is by Paula Strict. I think that's a German designer. And this is the Edda market bag. And you're supposed to knit these on at least the, the netting part on size seven millimeter needles I didn't have that and for this I think I used six which was a bit too small and I did a bunch of things wrong on this one but it's still a bag and it's still functional um the cotton that I used for this one is quite thick um but I quite like that it's quite strong oh no My Roomba decided to turn itself on. I don't like doing housework, so I have a robot 
Yes, thank you. I have a robot vacuum that it works on the schedule. And because this is my like lunchtime, this is like after I've had lunch, it goes through the kitchen. Um, <laughs> but yes, I forgot about that. Anyway, uh, I think the only thing that's massively wrong that I, that I, the big, big mistake I did was, um, when doing the bind off, um, I did it too tight and when you have something that is very heavy in this bag the part that is tightly bound off kind of cuts into your fingers when you're carrying it so uh i to fix that i could unpick the bind off and i actually might do that because otherwise i really really like this bag um but yeah otherwise i'll just i don't know not carry super heavy things in it. I started another one. This one isn't completely finished yet because it has uh, still needs its ends woven in and a little bit of finishing work. But I used a bigger size needle for this one. I found somewhere deep in my stash a six and a half um, mil liquor needle and I used a thinner yarn for this one. This is the uh, Rico Super Baby Soft something cotton yarn and it's in a ochre colour. I really, really like this one. You can tell that how much of a difference the yarn makes in the structure of the bag. This one is way floppier. I also try to do uh, a bit more of a stretchy bind off but I still find it's quite tight. I think my bind off is just super tight so I might unpick that and do a really really super stretchy bind off who knows I have still a ton of this yarn left um, I found that especially for the slightly thinner cotton I don't I use like slightly more than one ball uh, for the thicker cotton yarn I you know use uh, quite a bit of the second ball um, but yeah it just kind of depends on what yarn you use and you could always make the band a little bit thicker or if you're going to because that's my plan make a bunch more of them you could uh, save your leftovers from one and get a different color and get like a different color bag with different color handles that kind of thing so that's kind of my plan I really really like these and um, definitely plan on using these instead of uh, plastic bags for shopping and stuff and I just want to have like a bunch lying around the house so I can easily grab them when I go outside and just have them in in my purse or in my backpack when I go to stores or whatever and just just not have that need to use a plastic bag so uh, yeah that's my sort of bag project the fun thing about those is that cotton yarn is so cheap compared if you are like, used to purchasing um, like a nicer woolen yarn the cotton yarn is so ridiculously cheap that you don't really mind uh, buying some of it and just trying out you know what how the different cottons work and seeing what you prefer um yeah i am knitting on something else as well this is my last project um i'm trying to design a shawl and it's not really working out i quite like the color and the, the style I just don't like the fabric yet. I don't think it's floopy enough, if that makes sense. It's, I don't know. I feel like it could be a bit more floopy. That's my technical term for that. Um, I'm knitting this out of uh, yarn from Camarose. Um, this is their Manstrala or Monstrola, whatever. And this is their Yaku. And this is, I've no idea what this is made of. Oh, it's just 100% Merino. It's 
very soft, very nice. This is the Burnt Curry colorway, and this is the Gilden, Gilden colorway. So uh, I have a bunch of these, and uh, yeah, I just, my idea is to just make this giant um, asymmetrical triangle with some really interesting texture on it that is still floopy and the the idea is that the mohair will make it sort of warm and fluffy and cuddly and we'll see we'll see how it goes so that's something that's because i i, I ripped it back and i was just trying some stuff and um yeah it wasn't it, it wasn't working as I really wanted it. So uh, it's it's a little bit of, it's in a little bit of a time out at the moment. So yeah. Do I have anything else? Uh, not really, not really. Oh yeah. So um, you know, I have been sort of MIA for a, quite a bit but I did receive like a bunch of super lovely messages on Ravelry and on YouTube and on Instagram. And I would really, really like to thank everybody who's been reaching out and who's been leaving messages and, you know, asking me how I was doing and all of that stuff and sort of checking in. And that's just, I think that's really, really nice. So thank you to everybody who did that. I also really would like to thank everybody who's still been purchasing the Odeline sock pattern on Ravelry. Uh, I designed a sock pattern in 2019, I think. And it's just, you know, whenever I get a message from Ravelry that somebody's purchased that pattern, it just really makes my day. It's so fun to think that somebody decided to knit that pattern because I still feel like, you know, I feel so strongly about it and I just feel like it's such a beautiful pattern which is silly to say because I designed it but I just really still like that pattern so much and I just I really enjoy it when other people um, enjoy knitting that as well so thank you very much for every to everybody who did that um, yeah so that's it for this episode I guess because I still need to maybe eat some food before I go back to work um, you know, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for kind of sticking around and waiting. And um, hopefully <laughs> the next video won't take so long to record. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye. Bye.